how would you define, how would you explain eroticized rage? Um, you want to do just it, for the listeners oh, well, knowing, they're so, both sitting there thinking. Yeah, we're thinking. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm I'm going to give some examples. Mm. I think that might be helpful. Well, first of all, I'm going to say that this is unconscious. So addicts, when we're talking about their behavior and some some pretty outrageous things can happen, they really don't understand that perhaps they're really angry or rageful with their own lives, with things that are happening that might be projected into the relationship that they have or the marriage that they have. They, they don't, they're not aware of it. So I think one of the biggest indicators of eroticized rage is when someone brings someone from the outside into the marital bed to have sex. Because we say, well, why, why, what, why would someone do that? That like, that's so personal. And, and for the partners, I find that this is really a, a, an extremely hurtful, a very insulting, very uh, uh, devastating piece of information when they find out. It's one thing to be sexual mm. in a hotel room. It's another thing to be sexual, right? But so when- to be, So to be clear, you're not talking about bringing someone in to, for the couple to have a threesome. You're no. talking about the addict bringing someone else into their bedroom and being sexual with them in the bed that they sleep with and share with their partner. Yes, thank you for that clarification. And not metaphorical <laughs> marital bed, but literal. The literal, literal marital bed. bed. <laughs> Wendy, um, not to disagree, um, but I want to I wanna expand or offer, like I... I think sometimes addicts are conscious of that. I'm thinking of those who have that more vindictive, um, retaliatory piece of, I'm, I got into this big fight with my partner at home. And so, you know what? I don't care. And so I'm going to go out and I'm going to go do X, Y. And that that is their literal thought process of, I'm so angry over here. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what? To heck with them. I'm going to go out to the bars. I'm going to go cruise. I'm going to go watch porn because I know they don't want me to. You know, so there is that vindictive piece that is, I think. Now, do they understand it's eroticized anger? No, but I do think there's a consciousness of I'm so mad and I'm therefore creating that false rationalization, justification. I've seen that go out and do the behavior. I've seen both though, you know, and I think yeah, what you're yeah, talking yeah, about, what I'm saying. I think what you're talking about, Jeannie, is does somebody, does their addictive entitlement fit into anger? I'm angry with you. And so I'm acting out as a way to get back at you either directly or indirectly, or is it more of a, there's this stuffed anger that isn't really safe for whatever reason to express directly. And it comes out sideways, whether that's bringing someone into the marital bed. You know, I often think that paying for sex is oftentimes an expression of eroticized anger or sexualized anger. It goes by a number of different terms, but um, I'm using you and I don't really have any interest in the impact it has on you, anything beyond that. I'm just using you for my 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 what I want and I'm moving on and I don't care about you. The same way that uh, uh, many people who are porn addicts, the choice of porn that they choose to view will have very sometimes overt violence against women or against themselves. But it will also have very subtle violence. You know, there are a number of uh, categories out there that um, uh, are unfortunately rather popular with addicts, but also have this subtle theme of eroticized anger and, uh, you know, uh, expressing, you know, like expressing bodily fluids onto a partner is, while some people might find that very erotic, it can also be a, a very strong expression of eroticized anger. Oh, 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 oh,